<laughs> G'day, Stu from UAB Futures here, and today, well, another video to help some of you guys out. Now, a lot of you are probably going to know this, but uh, this is really aimed at those new pilots and trying to help the people who are just coming into the hobby, because that's what this channel is all about. Trying to share this gift of FPV with everybody. Anyway, what we're going to be talking about is the LiPos, and specifically how to charge LiPos, how to parallel charge LiPos, and how to do it safely. So we're going to be looking at a... Uh, uh, a type of charger, I've got a stack of batteries here that we're going to talk about um, and then once we talk about sort of the size and what sort of amps you should charge at and all those sort of safety things because there's a lot of questions people have uh, then we're going to be showing people how to stick it onto a parallel charging board so that's the other part as well because if I had to charge these batteries one at a time uh, I would probably spend more time charging than actually flying anyway uh, let's jump right in, we'll have a look at the bench and get started Right here, so let's have a look at what we're going to be doing. So the first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about the charger that we're going to be using. And then we're going to jump over and actually look at some different types of batteries. So we've got some different sort of cell counts just here. And then we're going to talk about battery sizes and how you can safely charge those. And then finally, we'll talk about uh, a different type of battery. So this is a high voltage LiPo. And then once we've sort of got those basics down, I'm going to show us how to safely uh, parallel charge uh, and we can choose the right amp rating and things like that. Anyway, let's jump right in. We'll have a bit of a closer look at the charger and we'll hook it up to a battery and uh, have a look. Righty, so let's uh, plug in our little charger just here. Now this is a Turnergy charger, beep, and uh, this is one of their four button chargers and pretty much there's a lot of different types out there, but I definitely recommend people get a four button charger. It makes things so easy. And I've just dimmed the lights a little bit as well so we can see this screen, righty -o. So the first thing I just want to point out to people uh, is, if we, go, if we go back just here, there's a couple of different little battery options. So we can look at LiPo batteries, uh, a whole bunch of things, so a, a high voltage LiPo. But pretty much what we're going to be talking about today is LiPo. So in your battery charger, with you, what you want to be doing is charging on a LiPo function. So we're going to start that. And then you get a few different options. So you can ju see just here, uh, we've got a balanced charge, normal, like a charge, a fast charge, or if you want to put them in storage or discharge charger lipo pretty much the only charging that i do is on a balance charge and it's pretty much good practice uh, to always balance charge your lipos it makes sure it makes sure that all the cells are at the correct voltage and keeps everything inside the battery nice and happy Right, yeah, so I've got all that sorted, but Stu, there's a whole bunch of other numbers are down here. So we've got our cell count and our amps. I'm not 100% sure what to do. Well, never fear. What we need to do is match that up, correspond those numbers, so they're going to safely charge our LiPo. Now, the LiPo I have here is actually a 3S. So the first thing you need to do, this is actually a 1,400 milliamp hour, 1.4 milliamp hour 3S battery. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we are charging on 3S. Now, I am doing that right here. You can see it's flashing, but... Uh, you can just go up and down to change that depending on what cell count you have. So I'm on 3S, so I'm going to leave it just there. And then the next thing we're going to talk about is how much how much juice are we going to be pumping into this? How much current do we want flowing in here? How many amps? Uh, and that is determined basically uh, by how many Cs this can handle. Now I recommend, now that sounds funny, but I recommend charging a battery at 1C. 1C, Stuart, what does that mean? Well, you can see that this is 1.4 milliamp hours, so that is what I recommend we charge at. So we're going to change the amps to 1.4 amps and we can see we're on a 3s so this would be perfect uh, to go if we wanted to plug this in and charge this battery so to safely balance charge a lipo make sure that your amps rate up to how many milliamp hours so this is 1.4 milliamp hours and we're at 1.4 amps so that is 1c so it matches up it's one to one sort of like on a one to one ratio and make sure your cell count is correct so it's a 3s battery uh and we're, we're charging at 3s so we could actually plug this in now uh let's plug this end in first that's important because you don't want to plug this in and then hope those wires touching each other. Plug this in uh, and then you just need to plug it into the correct port. So our 3S port is uh, its a little bit difficult, but it's the only one that this is going to fit into. All right, so we've plugged all that in and then all you have to do is pretty much hold down the start button. It will do a bit of a check and then it will start charging once we hit enter again to sort of say confirm. Now this battery is actually already charged. Uh, so when I hold it down, you can see it's checking the battery. We can press start, but it's actually pretty much almost fully charged anyway. So it's at 12.53 volts. 
Now, very briefly, uh, I've got some different batteries just here. Now, I have a 3S and a 4S, and just what I want to point out to people, whatever you are charging, you can't charge these together at the same time, so you need to keep them very, very separate because 4S is a diff totally different voltage to 3S. So, uh, just in your charger, if you're charging 3S batteries, I stress again, make sure that it's on 3S, and if you're charging 4S batteries, make sure that your charger is set to 4S. Right here, so let's have a look at some different size batteries and what that means. So I've got a 1.4 milliamp hour, 0 0.7, and uh, well, I guess 0.45. So these are three different size 3S batteries. All the same voltage, but they actually have, this one has the largest capacity, uh, and this one has the smallest capacity. What I actually do, this is for my AL, that's for my Atom, and they're pretty much for my th my four inch racers. But all that needs, all we need to do if we were charging these, when we're gonna put them on one at a time, because I'm only talking singularly at a moment, this would just, this number here is pretty much the amp rating you're going to charge at. So for this one, we'll charge at 1.4 amps. Uh, have a guess what you charge this one at. If you said 0 0.7 amps, you would be correct. Now this one actually doesn't have it in the point. It's got 450 milliamp hours. So that would be 0.4 or 0.5 you can charge this at. And it's very important, especially the smaller battery that you go, uh, that you match it up nice and close. So. Sometimes if I'm in a rush, I might charge just at 1.5 or 1.6, but I really wouldn't str I really wouldn't recommend going higher than that. Look, a lot of people do, but just to stay safe, and I don't want, I would hate to see anybody sort of burning themselves or worse, burning some houses down or anything like that. Uh, just charge them, put the C rating, put the amps pretty much based on this number right here. So 1.4 to 1.4 amps, etc., etc. Right here, so that's all well and good, Stuart, but I want to know. How do we use a parallel charger? Because uh, these things are totally worth it. I think this one was like 20 bucks from eBay somewhere. Uh, but they are definitely fantastic and cut down your charging time a ton. Because on average, if you're charging at 1C, so 1.4 amps, say for this one, for a 1.4 milliamp hour battery, that is going to take about one hour. So pretty much this thing is going to cut down your charging time by six because uh, in a perfect world you could charge six at once. So let's talk about how we actually go about hooking them up to, uh, hooking them up safely to a parallel charger. Right here, so this is the parallel charging board right here and what this does, this actually just connects straight up to my little charger and then we can actually connect up to six batteries at a time. Uh, and w the first thing I want to stress is you have to make sure that you are charging all the same cell count batteries. I like to charge the same, pretty much, I, I only parallel charge the same type of batteries. Look, some people do do it differently, but this is just my recommendations. Uh, I will only charge the same type of batteries together that are the same size and the same cell count and the same C rating. So uh, that's why I sort of like to buy my batteries in bulk so I don't have a whole range but pretty much I have got a ton of these bad boys so uh that's what I charge them all together. So don't mix and match your batteries, just charge the same battery type on if you're going to use this parallel charging method. But let's get started and talk about it a little bit more in depth. Now there's a few things to consider when you're going to charge your battery. Number one, you can't actually just stick any number of these on here at any sort of charge level because it actually does make a difference because these things are gonna try and balance each other out. So it's very important that their cell, uh, cell voltages are close together. Now when we're going to charge on the parallel board, it is really important that the cell voltage inside each one of these is pretty much around the same level or within one tenth of a volt. So uh, on your uh, little battery checker just here, and this isn't the best example because these are all fully charged because I'm about to go flying later uh, this afternoon. But we can see here, we would check it and we're gonna look at its first cell and it's saying 4.19. But what I want us to pretend is, let's say it is at 3.7. Now within one tenth of a volt, we could charge this, uh, if we stuck this on here, we could also put on any other batteries that are between 3.6, I guess, or one tenth of a volt. So if I uh, wanted to put, I'd put all the batteries through about 3.7 volts on here. Uh, I'm gonna show you an easy way, I'm gonna cut to this now on how I actually uh, keep track of what their cell voltages are. Right here, so here's a good little tip for people, and this is how uh, I charge my batteries anyway. So when we're gonna use the parallel charger, because we want our volts to all sort of be similar in there, what I actually do after I measure each one of my batteries, I record what the first cell is going to be. So if I charge this one up and it was 0.75, I would sort of stick it just here. And this just sort of helps me keep track of all my batteries as well, because I have quite a few to check. Uh, and then after you sort of put them all in their places, like maybe this one was 7.8 or uh, there we go, 7.8 and 7.8, you keep stacking them up. And that really helps me keep track of what the cell voltages are. And that's going to make it a lot easier when it comes to finding out what ones we can stick together on the power 
Carol L. Sharjah. So that's just a good little tip. Uh, I'm sure maybe some of you have better memories than I, or maybe you don't have as many batteries to keep track of, but if you do have the space, just put a little strip along uh, and maybe mark it from, I don't know, 0.5 to, to 0.9, so 3.5 all the way up to maybe uh, 3.9, and then just put your little cell voltages on there for each of your batteries because that's gonna make it so much easier when we need to choose groups of batteries to put onto our parallel charger. Alrighty, so let's say we've checked some of our batteries and uh, just because this has six pads on here doesn't mean you need to charge six batteries at once. Don't You don't have to force yourself to do that at all. The most important thing is that all the cell voltages are at a really relatively similar or within one tenth of a volt of each other. Uh, but let's pretend all these here range from 0 0.7 uh, to 0. 75 in terms of voltages in each individual cell in here so we could connect all those up and we would have five uh, Five little batteries connected up to our parallel sort of charging board And you'd also have their balance lead plugged into the outside of the 3s parts around here So this is a 3s 3s port. This is a 3s port uh, this one just here So each one of these will have a corresponding sort of uh, 3s sort of balance lead So it's really I can't stress that enough super important that you plug those in as well well, and a good little tip on my balance charger anyway. Now look, yours might be different, your sort of uh, parallel board, but I know the little red wire is always the one that is facing inwards because you don't want to plug this around the, right, the wrong way because you will get a little bit of a short. So really make sure, <coughs> excuse me, that you're being careful when you plug in your balance lead to each one of these. It doesn't actually matter uh, if this battery here, say this was plugged in, if I plug the balance lead into this side or into this side, that doesn't matter. Uh, just make sure that each one of these is, a, each one of your batteries is at least plugged into one of the 3S ports around here, if you're using 3S batteries. If you're using 4S batteries, then you'd be in the 4S ports, 2S batteries in the 2S ports, etc., etc. All right, so let's pretend we've got five of these 1.4 milliamp hour batteries into our parallel charging board. What do we do then, Stuart? What sort of numbers do we put into our charger? Alrighty, so let's jump over and have a look at our charger. Alrighty, so uh, in our hypothetical world, we've got five, uh, five of these bad boys hooked up to our charger. So we need to make sure we're still on 3S, yes, but what are we gonna do about the amp rating here? Now this is pretty much the combined total of all the batteries in milliamp hours. So because we've got five of these, it would be five times 1.4, which is actually seven amps. So if I wanted to, I could crank this up to seven amps. There we go. Do, 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 do. And this would be great at charging uh, five of those batteries. That would be charging them at about one C each per battery when you are uh, sort of divided this number by five, you're going to get 1.4. But maybe, uh, and this is a very important thing to note, maybe your charger can't actually handle that many amps. Maybe your power supply can't handle that many amps. Maybe you've got one of these smaller chargers like this one. Uh, this is only a 50 watt charger. So maybe your charger can't actually handle that. What do we do then? Well, it is totally fine to charge this at a lower. It is totally fine to charge a battery at a lower amp rating. So go down to something, maybe let's say we just want to charge at five amps uh, for five of these bad boys. Or even, even let's put it down to four. Maybe let's pretend you've got a really low sort of smaller oh my dog's barking a sort of smaller battery charger just here a really low power supply and you can own four amps might be the maximum that you can charge at that is fine that's totally fine it's just going to probably take a little bit longer so once you've got your amp rating set and you double check that uh, you are charging the correct cell count of all your batteries and make sure you are not mixing up the 3S or the 4S, so just making sure you're using the same type of batteries, hold down your start button and it would start charging all your batteries at once and save you a ton of time because you're not gonna have to be swapping them in and out, just gonna be charging them all at once. Alrighty, fantastic. And the last thing I wanna talk about is this is a special type of uh, LiPo just here. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and we'll talk about this type of LiPo because you, this is a 3SR LiPo as well, but it's a bit different and you definitely don't wanna be mixing this up with your standard LiPos. Alrighty, so uh, this is one of the new batteries actually from Rotorx that came with my Atom. And just down here, it is important to note that this has high voltage lithium polymer battery. So this is a high voltage LiPo and uh, it is very, very different to sort of your standard LiPos like this one just here. So you need to be very careful. This one says high discharge, but it is not a high voltage. So be very, very careful 
that you are not mixing up high voltage lipos with just your regular type of lipos. But what does that mean? Simply in here, this is going to hold a higher voltage inside sort of the chemistry uh, makeup of the lipo inside. It's got some, I'm not, I don't know the exact specs of it and uh, the exact chemical makeup, but pretty much what that means is, yeah, it just holds a higher voltage inside each one of the individual cells in here. So this is a 3S lipo, a 3S high voltage lipo. And on some of these charges like this, the way we get to that, you can actually see we can go through and there we go, a LiPo high voltage battery. Uh, now these chargers can't actually tell the difference when you plug them in if you are plugging in a high voltage LiPo or just a standard LiPo. So be very, very careful. This one actually gives you a few warnings when you plug it in uh, to make sure that you are uh, sort of just double checking that you're using a high voltage LiPo. But this is a little bit of an exercise for you guys. So what would we set this at? So we've got an 850 milliamp hour battery, uh, hammer, and it is a 3S sort of uh, a 3S battery and high voltage. So I'm, I know this is on LiPo high voltage, but what sort of uh, amp hours and what sort of cell count would you put in? So let's have a little think. Three, two, one. Now, hopefully uh, the cell rating, it's a 3S. So hopefully you said 3S in the cell rating. And looking at here, this is an 850 milliamp hour battery. So hopefully you are charging at 0.8 amps or 0.9 amps because it's not gonna go to 0.85. Uh, this charger charges in a 10th of an amp. So hopefully you either changed your amps to point, let's see if we can, to 0.8 or 0.9. 0.8 would be safe. Look, 0.9 would be totally fine as well. Radio. So then if we held this down and this was all hooked up, it would be good to start charging. These batteries are actually awesome, actually. I wish I had a ton more of these. Now, just one more thing to note as well. Maybe your sort of charger leads come with a different plug on the end. Now, it is totally fine just to snip those off or sort of make a little adapter. So uh, just sort of make sure that your positive is always hooked up to your positive and your ground is on your ground regardless of what plug you put in. Uh, so it's going to correspond and match up sort of with the same plugs on your battery. Alrighty, so there it is. There's my guide on safely charging LiPos and how to use a parallel charger. I really hope that helps some of you guys out there because charging LiPos is a little bit dangerous and can be a little bit daunting, especially if you're new to the hobby. So hopefully that helped you guys out. Uh, subscribe for more FPV related content and as always, happy flying! Uh, now here's something a little bit random actually. Um, this is this goes out to one of my subscribers. They made a bit of a comment and people always talk about this. Now this is actually chopstick number two. So uh, this pointer, yes, it is a chopstick. I've had it since day one of my videos. Well, actually this is the other half of it. I don't know where the other half is. I'm sure it's gonna turn up. Yeah, but pretty much I just make the most of uh, the situation I have. Try to be a little bit resourceful. So uh, I'm using a chopstick as my pointer. So there we go. It is a fantastic one. I got it from a Japanese restaurant just up the road. Uh, but yeah, it's been with me from day one and it sort of has a little bit of sentimental value. So uh, yeah, this is a fantastic little pointer. So uh, let's have a look at some of the specs out here. So it's coming in at about four millimeters thick. Uh, and if we weigh it, uh, our chopstick is coming in, let's see, take your guesses, I'm gonna say four grams. Ooh, yeah, our chopstick's coming in at four grams. So, definitely can recommend this one to anybody who's after a chopstick for tapping things on the bench. <laughs> oh, what am I doing?